hey guys mock season is pretty much finished now and um, whether you got your results for christmas or whether you're about to get your results now it is unfortunately inevitable that some of you are going to be a bit disappointed so here are a few strategies to help you cope with disappointing results So you have to remember that your mock results are not your actual results. These are just mocks. The whole point of these is to point out to you areas that you need to focus on, point out which bits of exam technique you need to work on, point out which bits you need to focus on and you need to revise on. That is the whole point of them. If we expected you to be perfect already, then we wouldn't bother doing mocks. We would just put you right in for the real exams now. But we know you're not perfect yet. We know there's still stuff you need to work on. And the mocks are there so we can work out what you need to work on. We don't expect you to be amazing at the moment. We know you're going to do amazing in the real exams and we're just working to help you get there. Now, if you have to go home and tell your parents your results, some of you might be a little bit apprehensive about this. So, I suggest you go in with a plan. You can go home and say, look, I did really well in this subject. Brilliant. In this subject, I didn't do quite so well but this is what I'm going to do about it. And actually, before you go and talk to your parents, people at home, your teachers about your mock results, actually think about why you got the results and think about what you can do about it. Be brutally honest. Did you revise for the mocks or did you spend the entire time playing Fortnite or on Instagram? Because this is the point, to be honest. It is much, much better to go and talk to your parents, go and talk to your teachers and say, yep, I hold my hands up, I'm sorry, I didn't revise as much as I should have done for that mock because I was busy with Instagram. But I know that now. I realise what I've done wrong and I'm not going to do it in the future. I am going to only play computer games for this amount of time per day or I'm going to get one of those apps for my phone which locks my phone and prevents me touching it while I'm studying. I have it, it's great. Or if you did spend a lot of time studying, were you studying in the right way? Because highlighting things while looking really pretty isn't necessarily getting the information into your brain. Do you need to practice some more past papers? Come up with an action plan of what you did what didn't work and what you can change in the future to make it work. So if you go and talk to whoever, talk to your teachers about a mock, say, look, miss, I'm really disappointed with my mock grade. I worked really hard, but maybe I wasn't working the right way. Can you point me towards some papers or can you recommend a workbook or can you recommend a textbook? If you go and have a sensible conversation with people, um, about what went wrong, talk to them about why it went wrong, they're going to be much, much more receptive as to, instead of you going, off, oh, I don't care. Um, if you go and ask people for help and say, look, I wanted to do this, but I tried this and it didn't work out, what can I do? That is going to work much better. Go with, uh, with an action plan. Say, I need to uh, practice some more multiple choice questions. I need to practice some more papers. I need to, maybe you need to get a tutor. Now would definitely be the time to start thinking about that. Maybe you need to stop doing um, a hobby or a club. Not forever, but just for a few months until the exams are over. Come up with an action plan so that when you have when you look at these mock results and you're a bit disappointed maybe you're worried about people's reactions before you get to that point of showing them the results actually come up with a plan what are you actually going to do about this if you've come up with your action plan and got everything sorted personally for me I find planning a way out of a situation makes me feel better about it. If I come up with achievable goals, so I'm going to study this paper on this day, or I'm going to do this on this day, and I spend time and I plan everything out, and um, this doesn't have to be boring. You can get 
get into Hobby Craft, get the biggest bit of card you can and all the glitter glue and plan it out in meticulous detail. Or you can write it on post-it notes and stick it on the back of your door. Or there are loads of online planning apps that you can get where you can move things around and you can have things in lists. That's what I personally use. And planning stuff, working out the problems and working out how to fix problems, that makes me feel better. However, if this doesn't make you feel better, then we still need to work on regaining a positive attitude towards the reason before we start back properly at school. There is a very, very general rule of thumb that between your mock exams and your real exams, you'll go up about 10 marks. So you can look at what the marks you got, you can look at the ground boundary and say, if I went up 10 marks, would I be where I need to be to get my target grades, where I be where I need to be to get onto the college course that I want or to get onto the, the A levels that I want. And if you are just below your target grade, then that's brilliant. You're doing really, really well. Remember, we still have quite a few months for you to revise. We still have quite a few months for you to practice, for you to get things sorted. So we don't expect you to be perfect just at the moment. We expect you to be working towards it. And this is just another way that us as teachers are helping you do that. Ouch. Mm, lovely cute cream.